Bum 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 bum. Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with a new headset and microphone that should fix any noise problems that had been reoccurring in the past. This video, we're going to continue on with where the Tau came from. Because the Tau came out at a time uh, that three races were introduced to 40k at around the same time and those were the Tau, uh, the renewed Tyranids, and uh, the Necrons finally became a full-fledged army list. These three races came out at the same time for a reason because they had a connected storyline. This storyline, which was around, uh, went from around the late 1990s into the early 2000s, was going to be the end game story for 40k, uh, leading up to that 13th Black Crusade and that that massive battle that took place. I think it was around 2005. Um, but anyways. I explained to you the Tau storyline, and now I'm going to explain to you how it fit in with the Tyranids and the Necron. It has to do with the War in Heaven. Now, the War in Heaven, as we know, took place millions of years ago between the Tau, I mean, the, the Necron and the Old Ones and the Eldar at that time. And we were going to basically revisit this. And it was going and, and the the Tyranid were representing the old ones and the Necrons obviously representing at that point actually the Satan. And yes, they were called the Satan at that point, not the Catan. And it makes sense that they will be called the Satan because they're connected to a war in heaven and to a fall. And you will understand as I go into more detail about why they would be called this. Now, at that point in time, the Satan still owned the Necrons, who were little more than space zombies. There was also something else interesting about the Tyranid and the Necrons at that time, and that is that neither of these army lists had um, individual characters, speaking characters. You had a Necron Lord, you had a Hive Tyrant. There was nothing individual about them. Neither of them spoke. Neither of them had their own... Uh, um, heroes or named characters. You think that was a mistake on GW's part? No. It was done on purpose. It was done because these races were so powerful that they were so far above humanity. There was no reason to directly communicate with us. You know, the Eldar barely consider the Monkai worthy of communication and these races were magnitudes above the Eldar so you can imagine then uh, that that the Tyranid hive mind even to the Emperor really would have uh, there's no comparison Yes, the Emperor is the most powerful psyker in the galaxy, but <laughs> the Tyranid are, is the most powerful psyker of multiple galaxies. So, again, not even in the same caliber. These were supposed to be races that could put Chaos and the Emperor to shame. The end-all, be-all of the power structure and the Satan were the equals uh, or above the chaos gods they were the new the new apex enemies of 40k to replace chaos that was the that was the plan back then believe it or not now for people 
who might not be around at that time, or those who were, let me give you a refresher course on the Satan. These star gods, as they were called, fed on human souls. Again, explaining why they were called the Satan. Not only did they feed on human souls, but they pretty much ate the galaxy. Um, driving to extinction, I think, like they said, 90% of the sentient life in the galaxy, and that was the reason why they went to sleep for 60 million years, was to allow other sentient races to develop. But they didn't just allow these races to develop randomly. They seeded planets with... Uh, genetic material to allow races, specific races, to develop specifically to cater to the appetites of different Satan. For example, prior to the Necrons going to sleep, none of the sentient races had a fear of death. According to the fluff, it was the Nightbringer who enjoys uh, the, I guess, flavor, is how they described it, that a fear of death gives to a soul when he devours it. So he created the fear of death in sentient races. That's why the sentient races that were alive when the Satan were, uh, when the Necrons were running around before, don't have a fear of death. The Eldar don't have a fear of death. They have a fear of Slanesh, but not death. The Orcs don't have a fear of death. The humans have a fear of death eh, because they were on a seeded planet that came afterwards created apparently by the Nightbringer. Next was um, the Deceiver. The Deceiver enjoyed betrayal, apparently betrayal, uh, flavored souls in some way that it enjoyed. And it was rumored that the Betrayer, the great deceiver, was the one who was behind the Horus Heresy. Because the big thing behind the Horus Heresy wasn't just that it was a rebellion, but that it was based upon a betrayal. Everybody was betrayed. Okay, the, 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 the rebels felt betrayed by the Emperor for not telling them about chaos, and of course the Loyalists felt betrayed by the traitor Space Marines. Everything was a huge, massive betrayal was the cornerstone of the Horus Heresy. And it was thought that this was all a plan of the Deceiver to season the souls of humanity with the feeling of betrayal. But then the Emperor was there to stop him from feeding on them, so he went and created another race. Uh, there is a story, and I think it's one of the Necron, old Necron Codex fluffs, that talked about a um, Mechanicus Explorator fleet finding these uh, races that had remarkable accelerated uh, evolutions similar to the Tau. They would come about and suddenly they would go from a, a prehistoric species to a, a hyper technology advanced species in the space of a few thousand years and then some cataclysm would happen. Some major betrayal in their social system would occur, and then there would be a mass extinction event, and the race would disappear. And it was believed, it was therefore hinted at from this, that this paralleled the, um, the, the, the development of the Tau. That it was basically, the Tau was created, they were uh, given enhanced evolution, then they created the Ethereals, who everybody was supposed to have absolute faith in, and then one day there was going to be snap of the, fing of the Great Deceiver's proverbial fingers, 
the ethereals would betray the great trust put into them, and the deceiver would descend upon the Tao and feed upon all of them as they undergo this soul-destroying sense of betrayal in the ethereal cast. <clears throat> now, there was also a uh, the Void Dragon, which was supposed to be on Mars. I have no idea what's happening with the Void Dragon now, but this was supposed to be the Machine God. Now, for people who don't understand, the Omnissiah, or the Emperor, is not the Machine God. It is He is the High Priest. He's the Messiah of the Machine God. The Cult Mechanicus worship the Machine God. Okay, and that was supposed to be the Void Dragon. Uh, and this is also mentioned in the Age of Sigmar. Um, there's this entity out there. Who, who, the Void Dragon saved Sigmar at the destruction of the Old World. Uh, but there is this entity out there, this clockwork god, uh, that puts souls in machines. The, the belief that machines have souls... And that the Mechanicum uh, sanctifies the machine spirits. This isn't metaphorical. This isn't uh, Canticle for Leibowitz style lost age of technology worshipping machines that people don't understand. Uh, Games Workshop transferred this into a literal deity of machines and there are literally machines that this machine god puts souls into uh, that other machines don't have um, so the cult mechanicus isn't just some superstitious idiots uh, their technology is sanctified for a reason, because it belongs to the machine god. In a literal way. And that machine god was the Void Dragon, which is uh, somewhere buried on Mars, um, who they worship. And the Emperor is the Omnissiah of, or the High Priest of the machine god and that is why uh mars is a separate government entity from the imperium altogether uh they worship their own god not the emperor just like the um navis nobilite the navigators they worship uh the warp really, essentially, of which the emperor is the, <clears throat> what did they call him, the chief cartographer? He's basically the person who understands the warp better than anyone else in humanity. Therefore, he is the de facto leader of the Navis Nobilitae. Just like he's the de facto leader of the cult of Mars because he has the greatest technological understanding of anybody in humanity. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, that's how he got these positions of being everyone, everything to everyone. Because whatever your philosophy is, the emperor is at the top of that pyramid. Um, he is the best at whatever humanity is doing. And therefore, he must be your ruler in some way. Whatever it is you believe, he's the best at it. So, even if you believe in nothing, if you just believe in science, right? Uh, uh, well, okay, well then he's the chief scientist. Okay, again, you're going to be back into the Mechanicus type of thing. He knows more about science and technology than anybody else in humanity, so that makes him the scientist supreme, which is still your head of your society. Now, um, 
<clears throat> understanding this is the context that you need to understand what 40k was like at the uh, late 1990s, early 2000s. Enter the Tyranids and the Necron, who are the new power structure um, to reenact the War of Heaven 60 million years later. The Necrons are waking up. <coughs> the <coughs> old ones are returning to meet them as they wake up in the form of the Tyranid, and they were going to fight. And that was going to be the end of the 40k story at, at, at 50k. Which reminds me, those people who are still watching this video right now, a little Easter egg for you. Why is Warhammer 40k 40k? Why is it 40k? Why is it not 30k? Why is it not 25k? Why is it not 57k? Why is it not 100k? Why 40k? Do you know? That's my favorite trivia question to ask all the people who think they know everything and everything about 40k. Uh, why is it 40k? And to date, I have yet to find anybody outside of GW who can answer that question off of the top of their head. And you can't even research it. I mean, you can try to go find it like 4chan or your Lexus or Wikipedias or whatever. Why is 40K 40K? You're not going to find it. I mean, they're going to tell you, oh, it's 40,000 years of history. Yeah, but why 40,000? Where does that number come from? Okay, that was my pause to let you think about it, and I'll give you the answer. And you can pause now longer if you want to try to look it up. But I bet you can't find it. So, for you special few who watch my videos up to this point, you will now know why 40,000 is 40,000. It is because, and this is my final nail in the coffin of connecting 40K to Dune. If you are a Dune aficionado, the recorded history of the Imperium in Dune is about 40,000 years. It's true. About 37,000 and some odd hundred centuries thrown in there, but it's about 40,000 years. That's where 40K comes from, because I've always said 40K Warhammer was paralleling Dune. And that, in my opinion, is the ultimate proof of this. You have 40,000 years of recorded history in the Dune timeline and Warhammer 40K. If you want to believe that's a coincidence, okay. But now you know. It's Warhammer 40K because there are 40,000 years in Dune's history. Yeah. Now you know. Don't you feel smart? Um, anyways. In the original fluff, the Tyranids deliberately avoided certain worlds as they entered the galaxy. These worlds later became identified as Necron tomb worlds. So this was the first indication that the hive mind is actually sentient and has a plan other than devouring the galaxy. It knows these were tomb worlds before the Imperium knew they were tomb worlds and it steered clear of them. It seemed to be deliberately avoiding Necron planets. Neither of these races had, as I said, individual named characters. Uh, some of this was believed at the time to be based upon an episode that you saw in, in uh, Babylon 5. If you like to watch that show, there was, a, there was an episode where Jakar, uh, specifically about the old ones in, in that universe, where Jakar uh, uh, picked up an ant on his finger and asked him, I just picked up this ant on this finger and then put it down. Do you think this ant has any concept of what I'm doing, of what just happened, of that it was on my finger, of that I picked it up or put it down, or what is going on in all of our 
galactic politics that we have going on? No. In the same way, the old ones are as far above us as we are above this ant. There is simply no communicating with them any more than there is an ant communicating with us. There's nothing that can be verbalized. There's no concept that we can share in common with them. And that is why the Tyranid and the Necrons originally had no named or speaking characters. And the f war between them was going to be the end of the 40k story. They are so far above us that even chaos is just... That way, th th it was quickly established that the uh, Necrons knew all about chaos. They built these pylons around the Eye of Terror, and they could close it uh, with a snap of their fingers. Um, e even even the Tyranids, some of the fluff on them, and some of the fluff I read online, uh, uh, where the Necro where the Tyranid uh, uh, encountered chaos they don't even recognize it as chaos they can't be fooled they don't see demons because these are psychic impressions upon human brains okay demons don't actually have a body they don't actually have blood or fangs or swords this is just how they appear to our psyches this is our brain making sense of warp phenomenon to the tyranid they appear as they are naturally just uh, blips of warp energy uh, they look at them as kind of like mold uh, on a food um, if, if, if not as that as a threat and, and they well they would only look at them as a threat as in they make food go bad and therefore it's they, they, they don't want their food to go bad so they remove the contagion that causes food spoilage that was how tyranid see chaos and uh, uh, so as I said the satan were feasting on souls they they seeded the galaxy with the sentient Xenos races now with all of their different weaknesses uh, specifically to sate their appetites. That's why... And the Great Deceiver is... Come on, Satan and the Great Deceiver. I, do I have to explain the connection there and the war in heaven and everything like that? There's a reason why these names were given there because they fit with the end-time storylines, the apocalyptic storylines that they had uh, at that time in 40K. That was retconned, and now the Satan became the Catan, and now actually they don't even exist anymore. Maybe the Void Dragon doesn't even exist anymore. We don't know. I think the Void Dragon is going to come back. Uh, pariahs don't exist anymore. Um, pariahs were originally created by the Necrons as a uh, a a a um attempt to regain bioform right they wanted to create before they became a full army list the necrons were a raider force only doing all types of medical experiments on human beings and they found out that 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 they were creating uh the pariahs the untouchables the blanks in the human species these were created by the necrons as an, as an attempt to create a new bioform for them to inhabit. Uh, uh, well, the Satan were creating. Uh, probably the Deceiver was creating a new bioform for them to inhabit. Um, f that could not be uh, corrupted uh, or influenced by chaos because the Satan really didn't like uh, psychic presences uh, at all. Um, it was a competitor for for souls. Okay, chaos consumed souls. They consumed souls. They didn't like the competition. You, you can see what I'm saying. So they wanted to create something that um, that 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 the Necrons could re-inhabit, but also would not be food 
uh, for chaos. That was where uh, pariahs and blanks originally came from. Now we have no idea where blanks and pariahs came from in the in, in, in because that was retconned. Um, it's just not explained at all. Um, so you can see that at the start of the Horus Heresy with removal and changeover of management at GW, um, we entered this new phase of the end times, which was going to be based upon the Horus Heresy uh, series. And that's why there's no such thing as canon. I hope that makes sense. I got this done in, in 25 minutes, which I'm surprised because I covered a lot. Until next time, bye! Hmm.